back to the Ed Show, and thanks for watching tonight. An update now on what I believe, what I believe is the biggest story in this presidential race. Republicans, they are setting the table to steal the election in Ohio. Let's make sure that we don't stand silent and watch this. Two new polls show just how tight this race has become. The Ohio poll shows President Obama and Mitt Romney are only three points apart. That's within the margin of error. The Quinnipiac New York Times CBS poll gives the president a slightly larger lead over Romney. There's been no change in those numbers since July. So if Republicans manage to block even a small percentage of Obama voters, Romney could win Ohio. So far, the Republican vote stealing plan, you'd have to say, is right on track. They've shortened voting hours in all 88 counties in Ohio. 88 counties. They've shortened the hours. It's a direct attack on Obama supporters. 47% of people who voted in 2008 in that election cast their ballots during the extended hours that were made available to citizens. Those early voters were mostly African Americans. So Republicans are stealing almost half the vote by changing the polling hours. I mean, it's social engineering of the votes. It's very clear what they're doing. But when reporters ask the Ohio Secretary of State about it, he insists, hey, it's fair. You may not like the hours of operations. You may take, think they're too long. You may think they're too short, but they're fair for everybody. Everyone you talk to believes that's fair and easy and accessible. Everyone you talk to, he says, no. More on Ohio in just a moment. And there's a new development in Pennsylvania where they're fighting that controversial voter ID law. The state Supreme Court says that it will hear the appeal on September 13th. Now, Republicans wanted the court to hold off until October. That, of course, would uh, leave voters just weeks before the election. But right now, 758,000 voters might not have valid IDs that they are going to need cast their vote on November 6th. In Pennsylvania and Ohio, organizers are going to have to step up the effort to fight these laws and help people get to the polls. It is all about education, communication, and mobilization, no doubt. Let's turn to Ohio State Senator Nina Turner, and also with us tonight, Jennifer Bronner. She is the former Ohio Secretary of State and author of the upcoming book about her time in office. Jennifer, great to have you with us tonight and, and Senator as well. Uh, but Jennifer, I want to ask you first, why did you expand voting laws when you were the Secretary of State? What was the motivation behind that to expand them? Well, interestingly enough, Ed, the laws were expanded by the current Secretary of State when he served in the Ohio House of Representatives. We just implemented them. We followed federal law, we followed state law, and we made sure that voting was as accessible to people as possible. They've enjoyed it, and now that it's being pulled back, you're, you're experiencing quite a bit of kickback. So, so why are we seeing, J Jennifer, the, the, the reversal? I mean, uh, you, you know, my opening commentary in this is that it's the Republicans trying to suppress the vote. Would you go so far to come to that conclusion? I think there's a fundamental misunderstanding of the Voting Rights Act. The Voting Rights Act, it, you look at states like Alabama or South Carolina, anytime they change a voting law, they have to get it approved by the Justice Department. Now, Ohio doesn't have to do that. New York doesn't have to do that. So equal doesn't necessarily mean pro forma across the board. It means bring everyone up to the same level where those who've been suppressed, who've been oppressed, have the same access that everyone else has had. And if that means we have to do a little bit more for these folks in the urban area, then we've got to do a little bit more. But we shouldn't set the standards for the entire state based on a rural county that may have 10,000 registered voters. Senator Turner, Secretary of State Husted says that the new rules are fair. I know you don't agree with that. What's unfolding here? I mean, Ed, certainly he didn't ask me. He said that everyone he talked to, well, he didn't ask me and he didn't ask the residents of Cuyahoga County. This is nothing more than uniform voter suppression. Make no mistake about it. Ohio and four other states, Ed, have Ex have extremely cut early voting hours. And get this, in Ohio and Florida, they cut Sundays. We know exactly who their targets are. And again, in Cuyahoga County, African Americans make up 26% of the registered voters. But during 2008, early in-person voting, they made up 56% of the vote. How dare we forget how we got over in this country, how African Americans had to dodge the bark barks and bites of dogs, how they had to leap over, over 
over uh, grandfather clauses and, and literacy uh, tests and poll taxes. And here we are in the 21st century with a, the elections officer who is supposed to adhere morally and legally to expanding the vote, but here he is suppressing the vote. And I'm gonna tell you something, Ed, if you are poor, working class, middle class, elderly, African American, Hispanic, or a woman, you are SOL when it comes to Republicans. They are making it very clear that they don't care if they are here to oppress and suppress, and they don't care how they steal the vote. Jennifer, you agree with that? I, I think we've got some real problems with anything being partisan connected to voting. Look, voting itself is not a partisan issue. It, it's, it's really what, what everyone needs to do is to come into the room when we're talking about changing the voting laws, drop the partisan cloak, stand up, be adults, do what they know is fair because our future depends on it. If we Well, where's if, your governor on this, Jennifer? I mean, where, where's Governor Kasich on this? He likes to present himself as a fair-minded guy. How, how can he go along with something like this? He's MIA, Ed, when it comes to this voting issue, and it's a, it's a shame. Oh, I think typically you've got, Ed, the problem where it's, a, it's the purview of the Secretary of State. The Secretary of State is the chief elections officer, and so it's very rare in any state where you get a governor who will step in and interfere, even when they've previously been a Secretary of State. But this is a situation where neither party should try to step in and grandstand and turn this into something other than making sure that the, the, the person in the lowest position on the street who's going to have the most difficult time voting is going to be accommodated, is going to be accounted for, is going to be on election day, the one day when every person truly is supposed to be equal. We haven't even gotten to the voter machines. We haven't even got to the number of voting machines that are going to be made available to all these 88 counties in Ohio. Who knows what kind of plan they're going to come up there. Senator Attorney, are you concerned about that? Very concerned, Ed. If you extrapolate out the data from 2008 with the hours that have been eliminated unilaterally by the Secretary of State, about 200,000 Ohioans will be in impacted by that. And if we remember, Governor Kasich beat Governor Strickland by about a 2% margin. Every vote counts, and no one should suppress, suppress the vote. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't care if people carry the title of Secretary of State or not. If you are a policymaker in the state of Ohio, if you are someone who cares about fairness and justice, it is all of our responsibility to stand up and tell the truth. And the truth of the matter is, is that it is Republicans who are suppressing the vote. And oh, by the way, over 180 bills were introduced in states across this country by GOP-led legislatures. And I wonder why. Why? Could it be because President Barack Obama is an African-American? I wonder. State Senator from Ohio, Nina Turner, and also Jennifer Bruner, great to have you with us tonight. We're going to continue to stay on this story because I think fundamentally it is the biggest story in this election cycle to set the table where it's going to be harder for Americans to vote. I'd like to know if the Tea Partiers think that that's what the forefathers really had in mind for America. I don't think so.